So Gina and I are camping in Kujbaquak National Park, which is in New Brunswick, Canada, and we're getting ready to go for a hike along one of its scenic trails. And today the hike will be the Bog Trail. And as you can well imagine from the name Bog, it's likely to be infested with mosquitoes. And in fact, we've been there before, and quite often we do get uh, a lot of mosquitoes and, and other biting insects uh, along the way. Well, that's true all over the park, maybe more so at the Bog, but it's true everywhere. So what I thought I would do today is share with you the uh, what we use for insect management, shall we call it. So if you're interested, keep watching. So for us, insect management is uh, two things. What do we wear on ourselves when we're out on a hike or at the beach or anywhere else here to prevent the biting insects? And what do we use when we're around our campsite so we don't necessarily have to put a bug repellent on ourselves? Well, I'll start with what we're using now when we go for a hike and, or the, even here at the campsite if the insects are especially bad. And what we're using is a product called Great Outdoors. It is made by Watkins. It is produced here in Canada, although strangely enough, distributed out of California. It is a DEET-based product and it has 30% DEET, so it's quite a high percentage of DEET in this product. It is claims to repel mosquitoes, black flies, biting midges, deer flies, stable flies, ticks, and chiggers. So a few of those we don't see a lot of here, like ticks and chiggers. Oh, ticks, yes. Chiggers, not so much. So it, re it claims to repel just about everything you'd be concerned about. Now, what makes this different from any other deep product, and we have tried, we've tried off in deep woods and a number of them along the way, is that it is a cream. So it uh, goes on in a, in a nice smelling cream base and then soaks into the skin very quickly and doesn't leave that oily feeling sometimes get from a lot of the others. So let me show you what it looks like. I'll put a little bit on the back of my hand and arm just so you get an idea. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So... So you can see it is a, if I get to the camera here, a cream-based uh, as opposed to uh, a spray or an oil that you would rub on. And it goes on quite nicely. And within a minute, it has a pleasant smell. And you know, I don't know how it does, there's not often instructions on the back of the spray cans, but it doesn't matter if you have a spray, pump, oil, or whatever. It works much better if you rub it into the skin as opposed to leaving it on top. There you go. Yeah, it's already absorbing and I don't have that greasy feeling all over my body. So, this is the product that we have come to appreciate. Now, where can you get it? We find it in a lot of places. Costco here in Canada has it. The Shoppers Drug Mart here in Canada. Mountain Equipment Co-op here in Canada again. I'm not sure if Costco in the U.S. has it. I'm sure it's available on Amazon. I'll do a little research and put some links in the show notes if you're interested in trying this out. Uh, we, we quite like this, and Watkins is a well-known name. I can recall back when I was a child, and there used to be door-to-door -door salesmen that would come and sell my mother products, anything from brushes to, uh, you know, makeup products to just first aid salves and Watkins and Raleigh were the two salesmen that I recall at the time. So this is an old company producing a good product. At least we find it to be a good product. Now, you have heard me say in the past in other videos that I had been looking for a DEET free product for when I'm out in the woods specifically and making YouTube videos. And the reason why I was looking for a DEET free product is DEET is known to be very caustic to plastics. And, uh, my video camera. I don't want to have my video camera start to uh, get corroded from the from the caustic of the of the DEET. So I was looking for some alternatives, and one of the ones I came across was a DEET-free product that was made in Halifax, in Nova Scotia, Canada, by a small firm uh, operated by a woman and it was called Atlantic. And I'll put a link to at least a portion of the video where I talked about testing the Atlantic, and I'll put a, a picture of it on the screen as well. And I had high hopes for the Atlantic because they had done testing and sent it off to a university where they had done testing, and they had some very good strong evidence that it would repel ticks. Well, that's fine. I don't have that many ticks to be able to confirm or deny whether or not it works for ticks. What I can say is it was a little disappointing in how it worked on mosquitoes and black flies and especially deer flies. Uh, mosquitoes and black flies, I can deal with. Uh, deer fly, they're my nemesis. Quite honestly, deer flies, they get to me the most. They're the ones that uh, I'm most tormented by. Um, it didn't repel the deer flies at all, or horse flies for that matter, and uh, you know, which are of course closely related. It, in fact, one time I was holding the, the Atlantic and the deer fly <laughs> landed right on the spray nozzle 
wasn't repelled by it at all. So I was a little disappointed. Now it's also an alcohol based product which means it should spray well, uh, absorb well and then dry up very quickly on the skin. But what I did find was that especially if my scalp or my face was at all sweaty from being from perspiration it burned. It was a strong alcohol and I got a burning sensation all over my skin. So does it work for ticks? I don't know. I really can't confirm whether or not. I didn't have any ticks on me the whole time I was testing it. Does it work well for black flies, mosquitoes, and deer flies? No, unfortunately it doesn't. So that one is, is, is an experiment that I, I can't report back positive results on. Now the other one was a product that or at least the ingredient that a number of my viewers had mentioned that's available in Canada and under the name of Icaridin. And I believe it's the same product that you can find in the United States under Picaridin. So the same natural, all natural, non-toxic ingredient that is intended for, for repelling insects. And I note now that all the major brands are using Icaridin or Picaridin in, in an alternative product. I have a bottle of that. I have been testing it. I can tell you that it appears to work equally effective at this point, equally effective to DEET. My only concern is that it seems to wear off a little more faster than the DEET products do and you have to reapply. I'm using a small pump bottle of it. I'll report back by the end of the summer. Uh, of course, by the end of the summer, the flies are gone, but uh, I'll report back and let you know how effective it is. So far, I can say a keratin, a keratin seems to be working very well. All right, so that's what we do for ourselves. Now, what do we do around the campsite? Well, we've tried a number of products. We've tried the off fans. It's the little clip-on battery-operated battery fan that uh, is supposed to propel a mist and give you a, a zone of protection around you. Uh, you know, we had we debated back and forth whether or not these things were effective, and then eventually we decided no, they're not. They have to work in a very enclosed environment, meaning no wind whatsoever, and supposedly it'll cl create an invisible cloud that surrounds you and gives you protection. I don't think they work very well, folks. I can't recommend those. One thing we have not tried is the Thermacell. And I know a lot of people have great faith in Thermacell. I'd love to try one someday, but they're kind of expensive to purchase as well as the replacement packets where the material is that's released into the atmosphere. Here's what's funny. We resorted back to something that a lot of you will be familiar with that is actually used here by the staff in the park, in the kiosks that they operate. It's something from our child, and that is good old-fashioned mosquito coils. Now, you can get them under different brands. I've seen them under Off brand. I've seen them under Coglins. This is called Mosquito Shield brand, and this supposedly is the premium black version as opposed to the old light green versions, and of course, that's what they look like. Do you know something, folks? These work. With under certain conditions, of course, when we're at the campsite and there's no wind or very little wind and we light one of these things, the it's a bit of a smell. There's a citronella scent to it according to the package. Then that little wafting of that little bit of smoke does seem to make a huge difference for mosquitoes. Black fly, or not black fly, sorry, we're out of black fly season. Deer flies, uh, I can't say, we don't get a lot of those around the campsite. So um, deer flies, I'm not so sure about, but mosquitoes, the ones that are, that are most annoying when you're around, sitting around camp, yeah, it does seem to work under the conditions that there's no wind or you're in some type of an enclosed shelter, not completely enclosed, but you know, like an overhang. These seem to work well. So this brand, you get 10 packages or 10 coils that's supposed to last five hours each, so 50 hours worth of performance, and I can say they do exactly that. We like using these, and we'll use them for a few hours, and then if we're going to get ready to go to bed, or if we're going to go for a hike, you just break off the burning end or, or rub it on a rock till you, uh, you know, put, put it out, put it aside, relight it later. So, they, uh, yeah, we're quite liking these. Old school technology, uh, but it does seem to work. Now, I know you might be concerned about, well, what is it releasing into the atmosphere, and it is safe for humans. Probably not. If you're in an enclosed area and you get a good dose of this, it's probably not especially healthy. DEET's not especially healthy, but we continue to use DEET. I would say you, you use it within reason, within, within the instructions that are on the package, in a ventilated area, with no wind, of course, because you're going to lose all the benefit if it's very windy. And uh, yeah, you might want to go back and give these a try. Not necessarily this brand, but this brand we know works because this is what the staff here at the National Park use. But you might want to go back and give it a try. Okay, 
two products that we know work that we use when we go camping, car camping especially. What do you use? That's what I'd be interested in knowing. What have you found to be effective that is cost effective but effective against as many different biting insects as you are, have been exposed to? I'd also be inter interested in knowing if you have a specific experience around the thermocell. Should I invest in one? Is it really worth the money to invest in one of those? Because you can tell they are kind of expensive. That's all I'll have for this short video. Hopefully you found some value in it, and I would invite you to add any comments you'd like in the show notes below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you may want to do that for more videos like this and other videos. But in the meantime, get out and explore. That's what we're doing. We're going to the bog path today, or the bog hiking trail to see what we can find that's different. So again, get out and explore, and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.